have you ever found yourself scrambling to get the best seats? Maybe at the restaurant or uh, at a concert and get closest to the stage. Maybe on the plane. Anyone done that on the plane? You're trying to get the best seats in the plane or um, maybe here at church. Hands up if you've got your own pew. Come on, be honest. <laughs> Jesus was at a meal at the house of one of the leading Pharisees and uh, that's pretty much what the guests there were doing. They were vying for the most honourable places at the table. Once again, we see in these religious leaders that being very religious doesn't necessarily mean that we are living spiritual lives. That was true for them and it can be equally true for us. And Jesus, of course, he noticed this behavior of the so-called religious elite. So he responds with a parable. And I want to suggest that this parable is as relevant and important to us as it was for them. He says, when you get invited to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor. Don't claim for yourself the higher place, because when you put yourself there, it'll be taken away. But instead, he says, take the lowest place because then you might find that the host comes and elevates you to a place of honour which cannot be taken away. Now, the first thing I want you to notice is that Jesus does not seem to have a problem with us desiring this higher place of honour. This is, this is really good news because I suspect that honour is something that we all deep down really want. Yeah? When we're respected, when we're admired, honoured, we we, we feel desirable, we feel loved, we feel safe and secure, like we can take some risks, we can put our best foot forward in life. Jesus doesn't have a problem with this because this is exactly what he came to give us. He came to elevate our life, to lead us to the higher place. He came to fill us with a love that makes us truly secure and releases us into our fullest potential. So in this parable, Jesus is not disregarding our desire for the higher place. Right? He's not saying, oh, you shouldn't want that. You know, not good. <laughs> He's not saying that at all. The point of this parable is to actually show us how to get to that higher place and even more importantly, how to stay there. And his basic message is this. Don't try and get there on your own. Everyone who exalts themselves will be humbled. But the man who humbles himself will be exalted. Now, this parable is not just talking about how to behave at a wedding party, right? Jesus is using the wedding as a metaphor for life. He's he's pointing to all the everyday little ways that we try and claim respect and admiration for ourselves, all the ways that we try and validate ourselves, all the ways that we try and make ourselves feel lovable and safe and secure. So, for example, competition is a perfectly legitimate thing on the sporting field, right? Right? Nothing wrong with competition on the sporting field. But when we carry that competitive spirit into other areas of our life, the need to compare ourselves or or to outdo others, then that just becomes another way that we try and grab for the highest place. Yeah, There's nothing wrong with succeeding in our work, but if I look to my job as a way of feeling important or powerful, or so that I'll be noticed and affirmed by others. And well, that's just another way I'm, I'm, I'm trying to grab for the higher place. There's nothing wrong with being blessed with financial wealth. But whenever I get worried about my wealth diminishing or not having enough, or, or when I get consumed with a need to accumulate more, then once again, I'm, I'm just grabbing for myself the place of honour, the higher place. There's nothing wrong with knowledge. But when I look to my intelligence as a way of validating myself or, 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 you know, looking down on others who are more ignorant than me, then once again, I'm using that gift that God has given me as a way of grabbing for myself the higher place. There's nothing wrong 
with taking some pride in our personal appearance. But when I must have the latest fashion to feel good about myself, it's just another way I'm reaching out for the higher place. Now, I'm I'm embarrassed to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway, just in case it's helpful, all right? (laughs) Sometimes when I'm at the gym, I catch myself admiring my physique, all right? (laughs) Now, it's one thing to appreciate the uh, um, results of my hard work, right? But when I put my value or my security in how I look, then that just becomes another way that I'm I'm grabbing for the higher place. Even our religious activity can be a way in which we pursue our own honour. And we see that often with the Pharisees and the Gospels, right? This this going after the place of honour can often be so very subtle, we we don't even realise that we're doing it. And perhaps that's because this is the entrenched kind of philosophy of our world. As a society, we seem to have adopted this idea that life is dependent on us, that we need to work it out. We need to make it happen. You have the power. That's the message, right? You have the power. Go and do it. Go and make it happen. It's up to you. No wonder we are so busy and stressed and anxious. (laughs) Even though we might be very religious, deeper down we can often live from a belief that everything is on our shoulders, which is not at all the message of Jesus, by the way. This way of living is not necessarily immoral, but Jesus' point is that it's, it's just not a spiritual way of life. It won't lead you to where you really want to go. And it's also not sustainable. The, the, the honour that we grab after for ourselves will never last. It, it's, it, it's not of the same quality as the favour that God wants to give us. God's desire is to take us to a, a whole new level of life. right? One that we, we cannot even imagine, let alone attain um, by our own efforts. But the problem is that we are so busy grabbing after things that we don't even realise what's available to us. This is why Jesus said that it's it's hard for a rich man to enter heaven. Not because rich people are evil, but because when we have everything we need, which is true for most of us, perhaps all of us, we, we can so easily fool ourselves into thinking that we can work out life for ourselves, right? We, we get lost in temporary, fleeting treasures. We miss the main thing. So Jesus' key point to us today is that if we want the higher place, only God can take us there. He is the host in this parable who leads us to the higher place. But it, it requires from us a whole new mindset towards life. Jesus says that in order for us to be elevated by God, we need to take the lower place. We need to stop grabbing after things. We need to stop sort of forging our own way through life, you know, in our own strength. We need to trust a little bit less in our own wisdom and brilliance. And instead... We need to learn how to live with a posture of humility. With a heart that recognises that everything is from God. Everything I have has come to me from God and only God knows the bigger plan for my life. Living with humility means that I I see life as a partnership with God and, and I'm constantly opening, I'm constantly looking to how God is leading me. How God wants me to use what he's given me, the opportunities and the gifts and everything I have, the energy. This is what it looks like to live a spiritual life. To recognise that I'm doing this in partnership with God. I I can't do this on my own. I think about it as, as living in the sweet spot. 
two, two things are happening when we're in the sweet spot, right? Firstly, uh, uh, we're using everything that God has given us, our opportunities, our gifts. We're making, uh, we're using them to our fullest potential, right? But at the same time, we're also doing that out of a heart that is surrendered to God's will and is constantly looking for God's lead. When those two things come together, we use our gifts to our potential, yet we're, we're, we've got this heart that's open and always looking to God and surrendered to God. That's the sweet spot. When those two things come together, and, and in that sweet spot, that is where we tap into God's wisdom that is leading us and guiding us towards the higher place. This is the secret to finding the higher place. We don't get there through our brilliance or our hard work or even by being like super religious. The only way to get to the place of honour, to this higher place, is by doing the will of God. As we work with God, as we say yes to how God wants to use us, then God will just... He elevates us. As we work with God, as we do God's will, it just automatically leads us into this higher life, into this life of deeper purpose and greater fruitfulness. But it's only available. We can only tap into this wisdom when we humbly wait on God. And Jesus said that the, you know, the Father hides his plans from the learned and the clever, those who think they, they know everything. <laughs> and he reveals his plans to mere children, right? Those who are low, open, humble, receptive, ready to receive God's word. I think this is, for me, this is summarized beautifully in uh, Psalm 127. I, I've taken the message translation, which is a more of a contemporary version, and here's, here's what he says, the psalmist. He says, if God doesn't build the house, the builders only build shacks. If God doesn't guard the city, the night watchmen might as well nap. It's useless to rise early and go to bed late and work your worried fingers to the bone. Don't you know he enjoys giving rest to those that he loves? See, when we, when we take the lower place, and when we tap into the wisdom of God... It's there that we discover exactly what we need when we need it. God gives it to us. And when you're in that place, when you're in that sweet spot, you'll find that you do not need to grab for things so much anymore. Because God's leading you to where you really want to go. One word from God can have a greater impact on our lives and a whole lifetime of effort. It's that powerful, huh? Now, this might sound a little bit spiritual to some of us, perhaps, you know, <laughs> but I want to suggest this teaching of Jesus today is very concrete, it's very practical. I want to give you uh, two very simple things that you can do every day to, to find and to, to live in this sweet spot. The first thing is just to, at the beginning of your day, make some kind of prayer of surrender. This could take 30 seconds or less. Just say, God, I give you this day. Lead me. Show me what you want me to do, where you want me to go, who you want me to talk to. Give me the words. Help me to be your vessel today. Just make an act of surrender, however that flows out of your heart. So that's one thing. The second thing I'd encourage you to do is to, is to carve out some time in your day for a bit of silence. Ten minutes is a good start, ideally in the morning if you can. And, and then follow the advice of the sage in our first reading today. He says, the heart of a sensible man will reflect on parables. A truly wise man will be constantly reflecting on a wisdom that is greater than his own. And there's no greater wisdom than that which we find in the teachings of Jesus. So I want to suggest to you, um, as often as you can, every day if possible, but at least give, you a, give yourself a certain amount of times a week. You carve out 10 minutes and, and you, you find one of the parables of Jesus. Just Google it. Parables of Jesus. There's plenty of them, right? <laughs> or any of his teachings, for that matter. 
and just sit with it. You don't need to understand it, but just, just reflect on that teaching with an open heart and you will be amazed at how God uses that parable or uses that teaching to speak to you and, and to lead you into a higher place.